I guess it does take 10 minutes to boil eggs, but in this case, we're steeping some herbal tea. Oppo has come strong out of the gate with a foldable that actually addresses some of the quibbles that you might have with other flip smartphones. But while this phone might flip the script in some key ways, it also gets a little too mired in, let's say, traditions that many of its peers have thrown at us lately. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is the Oppo Find N2 Flip, a phone that I am simultaneously excited by, but also pretty miffed by. All right, so I'm changing things up a little bit here. You might know of a segment on my channel called What Worked and What Didn't, but this time around and more on brand, let's say, I'm actually going to talk about what things about this phone are my cup of tea and what things are not. We're gonna start off with all of the positives, uh, things that are my cup of tea when it comes to the Oppo Find N2 Flip. We'll take a tea break and then we'll talk about what might not be my cup of tea. The first thing we'll talk about is the design. And honestly, it's really hard not to have a bit of a wow reaction when it comes to flip phones, even now that we've had quite a few of them on the market now. The phone is indeed stylish. I have it in this sort of purple color, but uh, personally, I would really want the black edition, mainly because it actually comes with a bit of a matted feel to it, as opposed to this glossy finish on the purple edition that does slip about pretty easily. A flip smartphone is simply practical. It's able to get more minimal from a generally good size when opened up to a smaller form factor that's easier to just pocket or throw into a bag or to just have available at the ready. You still get everything that you would want from a general smartphone. I mean, you get a pretty loud speaker, a dual speaker setup, but here's one of the grills and then of course one up here uh, that doubles as the phone speaker. And then the fingerprint reader is actually embedded inside of the power button. So press here and then the fingerprint reader just gets you right into the action. But the main selling point of the Find N2 Flip has to be the fact that there's barely a discernible crease in the main display. Uh, it's definitely as minimal as it has ever been on a folding smartphone, and you can still kind of see it if you look at it at certain angles uh, at, under the right lighting conditions, but for the most part, when you're looking at this phone straight on and just using it every day, you barely notice it at all, which is a feat. But of course, another thing that I really like about the Find N2 Flip has to be its cover display. Now, this is the biggest one that we've ever seen on a flipping smartphone phone flipping. It's funny to be able to use that term. A foldable flip form factor. It is simply eye-catching and in all honesty kind of glorious to use, but we're going to get into why uh, the potential of the cover screen might not be fully realized just yet. As you probably know by now, despite the shape of the cover display, you can't use the full phone functionality on here, which is a little bit of a bummer. All you get are a number of widgets that you can swipe over to, and while they are pretty simple, they all work quite flawlessly. Oppo made it very clear that they just wanted the provided experience on the cover display to not have any issues, and that is certainly the case here. You also have access to some of the quick settings uh, by swiping down, and then a look at all of your uh, notifications when you swipe up. The cover display is certainly wonderful for camera use, but I'll expand on that some more in a little bit. Another thing that I do adore about the cover display is the level of customization that is available. Uh, you can put your own pictures on here. There are a number of different always-on display options that you can have, but personally, I just really like on this cover display to have the little pup always there, having some fun. So as I'm kind of alluding to here, practicality is certainly the name of the smart flip phone game. And to that end, what we have here in the processor is the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus. It's plenty for everyday use, even good for some higher powered things like games. And speaking of which, I already mentioned this, but there is a 120 hertz refresh rate on a vivid OLED panel as your main display. So playing games like Marvel Snap have been perfectly fine on this phone. And I have definitely been playing that a lot on the Find N2 Flip. And then all the bells and whistles that you would want, uh, in this case, eight gigabytes of RAM on my review unit. Uh, the storage is UFS 3.1. Phone calls have been perfectly fine when using this phone, but I have mainly used the Find N2 Flip and its form factor for things like video calls, just by propping up the screen a little bit so that you get a good angle when you're in those video calls. That's been perfectly fine, especially through the loudspeakers that are on here. And then the final thing that's pretty impressive is that the Find N2 Flip comes with a 4300 milliamp hour battery, which is fairly impressive in terms of size for a flip smartphone. And to that end, the battery life has been perfectly fine. Nothing too extraordinary, but also I haven't had a whole lot of range anxiety. Uh, I've been able to get through full days of work and play, even with YouTube playing in the background fairly often, as I tend to do. And you can always plug in for a quick top 
pop up, especially with the included 44 watt charger, which is nice. So let's head on over to the cameras. And I do like the shooting experience on the Find N2 Flip. I do have to emphasize the word experience, however, but we're gonna get into why some parts of the camera are not my cup of tea a little bit later. Because by far the best part of using the cameras has to involve the cover screen. Now the camera specs are fairly normal, let's say, despite the Hasselblad branding that is on here. You get a good 50 megapixel main camera. It does drop off pretty dramatically to eight megapixels in the ultra wide camera. And then the selfie shooter, which is nestled in that punch hole on the main display is a 32 megapixel shooter. The cameras do sound fairly powerful, but they're already not my cup of tea because of some weirdly expected compromises. And again, I'll get more into that later. But like I said, it's the cover display that really elevates the shooting experience. I can unlock the cover display, swipe on over to the widget that gives you a few options, and you can get an easy photo portrait or video just by using this interface. Let's head over to photo, move things over a little bit so I have an easier grip on the volume rocker, which is where we will take that picture. Uh, and yeah, it's just easy to use the cover display and frame yourself up because the actual display is quite large. You have plenty to look at, you have plenty in the viewfinder, so it's a pretty good experience. When using the main camera app, you have this tiny button in the corner that allows you to preview the viewfinder onto the cover display, which makes this a fantastic shooter for vertical video or social media capture. And while that is certainly a great feature to have, there is one huge caveat. Again, I will get to that when I talk about what's not my cup of tea in this camera package. So while there will be a number of mishaps that I have to cover in the next section of this video, I will say that Oppo did for the most part get a lot of their ideas right here. For their first attempt at a flip smartphone, I have to at least applaud Oppo and hope that they are going to keep moving onwards and upwards in the Find and Flip lineup. But they seriously have some things that they have to address in the next generation, which we're going to get to now. But before that, let's get into the tea break for this video. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And uh, for this tea break, I'm actually having uh, the traditional medicinals throat coat. It's just really good for me to have because lately I've actually been kind of sick and I have had my voice go in and out a lot over the last week or so. As you've probably seen already in a few camera samples, uh, there's been a lot of travel, including travel that involved the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Now, travel is a massive privilege and I'm really happy that I'm able to actually travel for work quite often. Uh, uh, but the thing is, even I need to just cool it and slow down a little bit after all of the trips that are happening. And uh, today I want to talk about the importance of rest. So I want to take this opportunity to just remind all of you that sometimes you need to take it easy. Make sure you're taking those breaks. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself because let's face it, burnout, the term burnout applies to way more than just work. So in your relationships, in your friendships, in your general day to day, if you want to avoid burnout in any aspect of your life, remember, take those breaks. That's the whole reason why I have tea breaks in my videos now, because even I need a moment while I'm filming all of this stuff to like take a second, talk to all of you, ask you what's going on everybody. In the comment sections down below to end this tea break, I will ask you, uh, what have you been doing to take care of yourself or to take a bit of a break or to rest recently? Let me know in the comments down below. Tell me what you've been up to. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this tea break. Now let's get into the rest of the video. Unfortunately, the very same form factor that makes this phone really enticing is also part of what is not my cup of tea. You see flipping and folding smartphones like this, it's undeniably fun. But what is also just as important is making sure that it can be kept safe. And that's why earlier I was saying that I wish I had the black edition of this phone because it actually has a matted feel to it that gives it just a li little bit more grip. This purple color is just slippery and it makes it so that this phone is a little bit less one-handed usage friendly. The thing is, uh, Oppo has not given an official IP rating for this phone. Um, and while they do say that the uh, folding and flipping mechanism can go for a long, long time, something like 10 years worth of flips and folds, uh, without an IP rating, uh, this is definitely a phone that you may not want to have around like a lot of sand and certainly not really uh, around water a whole lot. You don't want to splash or submerge this phone too much uh, because we don't really know what's going to happen to it. And the last thing I'll say is that the hinge actually has like a little bit of an issue staying at its various angles. There are times when I've had it just past the point of no return and it just falls right down. Uh, it's almost as if the hinge just hasn't really lifted enough. With a gorgeous OLED panel on here, you're probably gonna use the phone opened up fully more often than not. But there are times when you do wanna just have a bit of a viewing angle for like video calls or even watching YouTube. And sometimes the phone just sort of falls on its own accord. 
Okay, let's get back to this cover screen. The main issue that I have here is that the cover screen just doesn't seem to live up to the potential that even its shape seems to suggest. Like I said before, the widgets are good and you are able to get some good information from there. You are able to do the timer like for T earlier and you even have a quick look at all of your scheduled appointments or events for that particular day. But aside from the widgets, there's just not a whole lot else that you can do with the cover display. If I go up to my notifications and open up, let's say an email, um, I can reply to it, but then I have to unfold it in order to do more. If I were to open up, let's say a telegram message, um, I could reply to it, but I only really have uh, canned responses on here. I can't even do a dictation or just type on here because swiping on this screen could be perfectly fine. We just don't have access to a keyboard. Even when you use the cameras on the cover display, you don't have a whole lot of control. I mean, we could try to zoom in a little bit by pinching and whatnot. We do have access to a timer and the beauty modes, but there's not a whole lot else there. We can't go to the other lens. We can't uh, change the resolution if we're in video. And uh, yeah, there's just not a whole lot that you can do other than just hit that shutter button. It's a criticism that I've had for other cover displays on other flip smartphones, but this whole cover display area and everything that you can do with it, it's like a glorified smartwatch was just plastered onto the cover of this particular phone. And I've talked a little bit already about the camera compromises, especially when it comes to the cover display, but let's just put it this way. I'm becoming more and more convinced that the compromises we see in a lot of phones coming out of China in the cameras are like basically traditions now. It's just things that we can expect from phones that bear these names uh, that we won't have certain features in certain key scenarios. This front-facing camera, for example, if I were to go over to the video mode, um, I don't have access to anything 4K despite the sensor having 32 megapixels. It's certainly powerful enough, we just don't get to use 4K. And weirdly, when it comes to taking a selfie, whether it's this camera or even these cameras when using the cover display, the same tropes apply. Case in point, whenever you want to use the cover display when using the cameras, you are never allowed to use 4K. Even in the opening shot of this video, when I wanted to get a shot of me making the tea, I was trying to use the cover display preview when in the main camera app using the main 50 megapixel camera, but it would always go back down to 1080p. It makes no sense to me why 4K has to be locked out of so many scenarios that people might want to use it for. I know I harp on this all the time in my videos, but it's just, I'm a content creator. I'm trying to make very good content, good looking content, I should say, on these phones, using these phones in these camera tests. And it seems to me that like these tropes of mainly Chinese phones keep rearing their ugly heads uh, again, uh, stifling what could be incredible features on phones like this. And with a cover display like this that could be perfect for social media or vertical video capture, that's all just a travesty. And then other little things that I have experienced on other Oppo phones, uh, like for example, if you go over to the ultra wide angle, it goes down to 1080p. Okay, fine. I guess that's just something we have to be used to. And then you go, oh, you go back to the main sensor and it's still at 1080p. It doesn't even want to remember that you want to go back to 4K when using the main sensor. Which all leads to the final trope, or let's say tradition as I'm using that word, uh, when it comes to phones bearing the Oppo name. The main sensor is pretty much gonna be the one you want to use the most in a phone like this uh, because the ultra wide can do 4K, the front facing camera, despite a high megapixel count, doesn't do 4K either, but also is generally just a bit softer. It's not as sharp or as detailed um, as the other cameras. So yeah, when it comes to this, you want to be able to use the main camera, but even if you tried to use it with the marquee feature of the N2 Flip, well, you are cut at the knees once again by only being able to do 1080p. It's all just kind of flabbergasting to me. Anyway, enough of a camera rant, let's talk about what else might be missing from the Find N2 Flip. Normally, the omission of wireless charging is not a huge deal for me, but when you have a phone that can sit and still be used uh, pretty effectively, sometimes you just want to put it on a wireless charging mat so it's topping up while it's being used. And while 44 watt charging is certainly nothing to scoff at, uh, we certainly have seen Oppo uh, just go harder or rather faster with their chargers. And then finally, the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus, like I said, is a totally capable, very good good processor, but I know that some of you out there might take that into consideration when looking at a phone like this. Now, it kind of makes sense that these compromises are there because they're making sure that this can hit a certain price point of around $999 US uh, equivalent. Uh, but still, these are all things that you might want to consider if you're trying to pay a certain price for this kind of screen. Uh, there are going to be compromises all over the place to make sure that it's not a super premium device.
So ultimately for this smartphone, I will say this, Oppo basically sticks the landing, but they do get some points knocked off for kind of stumbling after the fact. And that's what gets me a little bit torn about this phone. I mean, most of what you want out of the smartphone is perfectly fine and all here. Even the software experience, uh, ColorOS has gotten better and better over the years with not only all of its various options, but also just getting a bit easier to navigate and not too convoluted as far as everything that it's trying to provide here. The fact that there's barely any crease on the folding display is honestly a bit of a triumph. And honestly, if it's out of sight, it's also out of mind. And I hope we get to see more of this type of covered display. There's just a ton of potential potential behind this. It's just that there are a few things that are holding all of this potential back, arguably as tropes that we have seen all too often over the past few years. Add on top of all of that a lack of an official IP rating and some premium features, and uh, yeah, you get the story of the Find N2 Flip. I am certainly excited to see where Oppo takes this form factor forward and what happens with the Find N Flip lineup moving forward. I'm just simultaneously enamored by this phone enough to want to use it regularly, but also miffed by all of the things that I just said are not my cup of tea once I butt heads with them. Make no mistake, this is absolutely a competitor to the Galaxy Z Flips of the world, where both are available of course, uh, but Oppo just needs to address a few of these things to truly achieve greatness. Unfortunately, what strikes me as traditional compromise might prevent that from happening. So here's to hoping they actually stick the landing perfectly on the next one. And so there you have it, my thoughts on the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Things that were my cup of tea and then things that were not. Let me know what you thought of this particular format in the comment sections down below and let me know what you think about this smartphone in the comments as well. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But with all of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this video. Thank you so much for kicking it with me today, especially during the tea break. Uh, please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.